Hi everyone! Today we'll be talking about one of my favorite artists, as you could tell by the shirt. We're talking Prince. Now I've had the pleasure of listening to his catalog all week to come up with the cream of the crop. I'm calling this, undeniably, the top 10 best Prince songs. And for a little bit of fun, I'll have an overrated song at the end, just to push people's buttons. But in the meantime, let's get to the top 10. At number 10, we have Money Don't Matter Tonight from Diamonds and Pearls. Now Prince is a master of many styles, and this is a great slow jam from that album. Diamonds and Pearls was a bit of a comeback album after the double whammy that was Batman and Graffiti Bridge, both lesser albums for sure. And it was the first album credited to his new band, The New Power Generation. Diamonds and Pearls had some ready-made hits, like the gorgeous title track and the over-the-top erotic workouts of Cream and Get Off. But to me, Money Don't Matter Tonight is one of the best of the bunch. Compared to those, it's much more understated. It's a conscious soul number that rides a smooth, laid-back groove to preach about politics, war, and the communal spirit of each other. It's some of Prince's best lyrics. It's pointed with crystal clarity. So what if we're controlling all the oil? Is it worth a child dying for? Even with the heavy lyrics, it's a catchy song with a laid-back groove that rivals prime Stevie Wonder. It's an underrated single for sure, and it definitely deserves a spot on this list. At number nine, we have Cindy C from The Black Album. The Black Album has a very special place in Prince lore. It was famously pulled a week before its intended release, after Prince became convinced that the album was evil, with some stories claiming that he had a bad experience with ecstasy. Instead of following up Sign of the Times with this, also known as the Funk Bible, he quickly pivoted and released the more commercial pop album, Love Sexy, a few months later. However, by that time, many promo copies were floating around, and it became one of the most legendary, bootlegged, unreleased albums of all time. Cindy C shows why this album is so funky. It's filthy, dirty, hard funk. Riding a classic huge drum machine, it takes a P-funk groove and then layers it with horns, synth, and vocals galore to make a not at all subtle tribute to Cindy Crawford. I hope underground DJs were wearing this record out because it is killer dance floor jam. The Black Album is Prince in his prime, and Cindy C is the best of the bunch. Hella horny and ready to put the F in funk. At number eight, we have Little Red Corvette from 1999. Before 1999, Prince had already released some great albums, especially Dirty Mind. But 1999 is the album that put Prince on the map as a true pop genius. Little Red Corvette is the smash single that finally broke Prince through the mainstream after being regulated to the R&B ghetto for so long. If somehow you had never heard the song, I can't help but think that you'd believe it sounds like a huge hit. The chorus is absolutely massive and contrasts with the slow, synthy shuffle of the verse, which makes it such a fun, engaging song. The alchemy of the track is pure Prince, with its hard-rocking guitars, club-ready beats, and new wave synths, and its lyrics that are overtly sexual, but just PG-13 enough to be a radio staple. Let's say, however, anyone who parks their car sideways, that has to be a giant red flag. But it was Saturday night, so I guess it makes it all right. Anyway, I digress. It's the first pure pop masterpiece from Prince, but far from his last. He might tell the subject of the song that they better slow down, but thankfully for music lovers everywhere, he wasn't about to let his foot off the gas. At number seven, we have Black Sweat from 3121. It's almost intimidating to become a new fan of Prince, because he released nearly 40 albums over his lifetime, and that's only ones credited to him. That's not including albums he co-wrote or wrote with Morris Day in the Time, Madhouse, The New Power Generation, or the many songs he wrote for other artists. There's so much quality music, literally hours and hours, that it takes such an investment of time to dive deep. But if you do take the time, you'll find so many treasures. You'd be forgiven for not listening to his late era albums due to fatigue, but you'd be missing out. 3121 was another comeback album in a career full of them, and it follows the funky musicology. 
Crazily enough, 3121 was the only album to reach number one in his lifetime. If you forget what a righteous banger Black Sweat is, you should crank that immediately. It has the minimalism of Kiss, but strutting around with Timbaland synths. It's a song Pharrell wishes he wrote, and it shows Prince's falsetto in top form. It's somehow futuristic sounding, but still nods to his classic era. Funky, sparse, and sexy, Black Sweat is a high-intensity workout. At number six, we have 1999 from the album of the same name. Now, how could a song that literally dates itself so much still be so culturally relevant 20 years later? Simple. It's a dance floor banger. So much so that today they still talk about partying like it's 1999. Prince definitely wrote better dance songs, but nothing matches the house-burning party vibes of 1999. With it, he came up with the Minneapolis sound, but few could touch Prince and the Revolution. The synth-pop party sounds so irresistible, it's fairly easy to miss its Cold War themes and apocalyptic visions. The lyrics show a devil-may-care attitude. Everybody has got a bomb, we could all die here today, but before I let that happen, we're gonna dance our life away. In the face of total destruction, the band decides to play a nuclear blowout, a joyous riot. Every reception, every New Year's Eve, if this jam isn't being played, is it really a party? Somehow, all these years later, we're still chasing the high of 1999. At number five, we have Purple Rain from the album of the same title. Now, I'm not sure if this is controversial to rank Purple Rain this low, I wonder if hardcore fans love this song as much as Fairweather fans seem to. It's certainly one of his most iconic songs, whether he's playing it in the rain at the Super Bowl or singing it to Apollonia at First Avenue in the conclusion of the film. An all-time slow jam. Those plodding 80s snare hits and Lisa's phasey slow strumming, that instantly recognizable chord progression. It's so damn dramatic. The term power ballad seems kind of lame to me, but this is one powerful ballad. The tone and lyrics really convey such a loving, longing feeling, even if we're not exactly sure why the rain is purple. What does that even look like? Is it some metaphor for happiness? Or is it just purple because that's on brand? It's an epic, soulful song that just soars, even if it seems a bit overlong to me. Now Prince could play some killer long songs, but around five minutes of Purple Rain, you realize there's about two minutes left to go still. And sometimes he played the song even longer live, which seems like a bit much to me. Still, it's inseparable from the man, a huge statement from a hit film that's still worth putting your lighter up in the air. At number four, we have If I Was Your Girlfriend from Sign of the Times. If Purple Rain is a slow jam that emphasizes slow, If I Was Your Girlfriend is a slow jam that emphasizes jam, with its funky Larry Graham bass lines and Prince cooing some of the horniest come-ons that he's ever done. And with Prince, that's really saying something. Sign of the Times is often cited as the greatest Prince album, and to me, this is the best track on it. Although, I would say that the concert film released at the same time is even better than the album. Given a hot live band, these songs really get a chance to blossom. That version of If I Was Your Girlfriend is even funkier and dirtier than the studio version, with Sheila E's funktastic beats, the hard groovy bass slaps, and some gender bending falsetto that few would even dare to touch. If Slutty had a sound, this might be it. He's so obsessed with his lover that he wants to get closer to her than anyone else. No matter if you're getting down on the dance floor or in the bedroom, this song is made for the moment. At number three, we have Let's Go Crazy from Purple Rain. What a choice it is to start Purple Rain with a sermon and those organ swells. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to get through this thing called life. He preaches about the trials of everyday life before exploding into the gospel of a good time with the most upbeat, infectious rock song ever made. Who wouldn't want to go crazy with those steady, dancey beats, flashy synths, and truly wailing guitars? 
This is totally prime Prince, blurring the lines between rock, R&B, and soul, while being unmistakably himself. Were elevators really a big problem in the 80s? I'm not quite sure. But the earworm is so catchy, he could be singing anything. He also decides that this track is a great time for him to shred on guitar. It just hits on so many levels. It's relentlessly upbeat in the best way possible. Grounded at first with a dose of reality in the intro before allowing us to lose ourselves. It's pure pop escapism at its best. At number two, we have Kiss from Parade. This is undoubtedly a monster dance song. I don't know if it's the gayest straight song or the straightest gay song. It definitely gender bends. And it sure is an asexual. It's very sexual. The sparse drums and minimal keyboards really set the scene for an incredible showcases of Prince's falsetto in its peak form. Along with tasteful burst of backup vocals, it really makes for a great sing-along song for the dance floor. Prince's guitar work, as always, is impeccable, taking James Brown funk licks with a little Jimi Hendrix and making it sexy as hell for the fun of it. The less said about the film Under the Cherry Moon, the better. But Parade still had some amazing songs, and a total knockout in <laughs> Kiss. At number one, it's When Doves Cry from Purple Rain. Dig if you will, When Doves Cry being the best song Prince has ever done. With its bold, sparse sound, those shiny synths, but that dark, sinister undertone. Removing the bass line provides no protection from those mechanical drums and haunting synth strings. It's literally incredible with what he does with so little. While the revolution backs him for most of Purple Rain, this is truly a solo affair, with Prince playing every sound, every note, every scream. It sounds like such a singular vision of a person so in tune with themselves, its creation at the highest level. He also couldn't stop there, and even directed the famous music video where he crawls out of the bathtub. Add to that the guitar that is truly a hair metal wet dream. Even though it's only 10 seconds, he shows a prowess on guitar that few could touch. It also contains some of Prince's best shouts and screams. Few could be as acrobatic vocally. <laughs> it has such power in theatrics. What does it sound like when doves cry? This, apparently. And it's one of the best songs of all time. And now, here's two songs that didn't quite make the list. Knocking right below it, at number 11, is Raspberry Beret, which really shows how many great pop songs Prince has written. It's an unstoppable, upbeat pop orchestra in single form. It plays so often, but still brings light into so many days. It's an earworm of a song that's still meant to put a pep in your step, and it's definitely a classic for a reason. The other pick is I Could Never Take the Place of Your Man. It's a song that should be as big of a radio staple as Raspberry Beret, an underrated power pop jam with an all-time chorus. Once again, the Sign of the Times concert film is really the way to hear the power of this song. It's pure pop bliss, and one of its best. Considering you're still watching, I figured I'd feature a deep cut as well. Now Prince has so many great b-sides, you could probably make a top 10 list of those alone. Whether it's Erotic City, or She's Always In My Hair, there are some great songs to be found. But today, I'm shining a light on the b-side to When Doves Cry, 17 Days. It's classic Prince riding a funky, steady beat with a simple keyboard melody raining down and a soulful vocal melody as catchy as any album cut from the time. It's a legendary live song. Check out him playing it live at the forum with its organ breakdowns, its funky guitar workouts, and some wailing backup vocals. For anyone else, it would be a career highlight, but for Prince, it's just a gift to his dedicated fans. You should check it out. And finally, we have what I consider the most overrated Prince song. And I'm talking about Darling Nikki from Purple Rain. 
While not a hit in the traditional sense, it's seen its prominence grow with the Foo Fighters cover getting play on radio. If you were to ask me whether it was a smutty classic or merely a provocation, I'd probably lean toward the latter. It's definitely more shocking than actually good. Prince has some sexual songs that can occasionally sound a little creepy, but to my ears, these lyrics sound cringeworthy. Personally, if I met someone in a hotel lobby who was pleasuring themselves to magazines, I'd be turned off. Different times, maybe. I understand the love for the heavy guitars, hence the cover, but it's far from the only Prince song with heavy metal riffage. Overall, it's a very minor song from an artist with literally hundreds of better songs. I'll admit the Darling Nikki scene is a show-stopping moment with him writhing and grinding on stage. However, while this left Tipper Gore hot and bothered, Darling Nikki leaves me cold. So there you have it. That was undeniably the top 10 best Prince songs. So how wrong was I? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you think Darling Nikki is an underrated masterpiece? That I should just shut up already? Let me know. And if there's any artist you'd like to see me rank, let me know in the comments down below. Hope you stick around, and thank you for watching. Look good. Looking good. <laughs> now, if... Uh, now, if Purple J... Uh, okay. Woo! <laughs> nah. In the face of total... Uh, in the face of total destruction, the band decides to... Uh, okay. Now, now I'm thinking about it too much. In the face of total destruction, the band decides to play a nuclear blowout. Yeah, okay. In the face of total destruction, the band decides to throw a nuclear... <laughs> In the face of total destruction, the band decides to play a nuclear... Yeah. <laughs> Was that right? Yes, you actually got it right this time. Oh, a little of this.